Hello. Thanks for coming to listen for my presentation. My name is Dmitry Sklarov. I'm employed as head of reverse engineering in the company Positive Technologies. And uh, today I will uh, explain some findings that we achieve uh, during uh, exploring of Intel management engine file system. Uh, this research was performed in cooperation with two of my colleagues, uh, Maxim Goryachi and Mark Yermolov. Uh, they already have uh, several presentations uh, about uh, Intel, uh, Intel hardware and uh, management engine, and uh, they will have their own uh, speak uh, here at Black Hat uh, today at 3.30 at room B, so I recommend you to visit uh, their presentation if you're interested in uh, ME security. And uh, I present uh, my previous uh, research about uh, management engine on uh, troopers in April this year, and uh, I recommend you to briefly look at my presentation later if you're interested uh, in this area because it's uh, connected with, with uh, this one. Uh, in my presentation, I will uh, explain what's uh, ME file system and uh, make uh, some notes about flash file system design. Also, I will describe how uh, MFS uh, built uh, inside, uh, what it uh, consists of, and uh, I will explain how it used by management engine and what uh, are interesting findings uh, related with, with this technology. So let's start. Uh, management engine is a uh, technology produced by Intel, and uh, initially it was released as uh, part of uh, AMT, Advanced Management Technology, and uh, it's originated from uh, year 2005, so it's more than 10 years older. Uh, and uh, almost every modern computer produced by Intel for last five years uh, deals with management engine. It's built inside some chip, not inside the central processor. It's additional processor and it works even uh, when your computer plugged in the wall socket but not turned on. So it's already operates. And it could run without central processor, without uh, dynamic memory, but could could communicate with them, and you could see on, on the left slide that uh, management engine is in the center of the uh, computer system according to Intel documentation from old version of advanced management technology. It could communicate with central processor, with integrated uh, controller hub, with flash memory, and with everything else, with network adapter. Also, there is uh, known, is documented by Intel that management engine uh, have uh, so-called out-of-band access to network cards. So it could uh, send and receive packets, uh, and that packets would not be visible from the level of the operating system running on the computer. And if uh, speaking about uh, privileges and rights uh, on the modern computer system, we all know two upper level on this picture, user and kernel level, uh, which was initially implemented in uh, Intel 386 uh, central processor. And later, uh, processor st starts offering hypervisor level of is isolation. So from, even from kernel uh, level, you are unable to control what's happened inside the hypervisor. But uh, if uh, talk for system management mode, uh, it's run below hypervisor, so it could control hypervisor on, on its uh, decision. But uh, at the absolutely bottom of the system, there is management engine. These four pieces are inside the central processor. Management engine in separate chip, it's in South Bridge, I believe, uh, and it's have, have almost uh, any any control over the computer system. It could access uh, digital uh, RAM, uh, dynamic RAM, uh, using digital uh, direct memory access. It could communicate with the central processor. It could uh, handle power management of the whole system and so on. So uh, from 
upper level, you're able to communicate to lower level uh, only using some predefined interface. And that interfaces are limited and uh, you're almost no, not able to control what's happened at the lowest level. But from lowest level, you're able to control everything. And uh, this research is about Intel management engine, which is in the bottom. So if you're able to control management engine, in theory, you're able to control everything that happens on, on your computer. Uh, we will talk about Flash. Uh, on modern computers, there is uh, SPI Flash chip, serial programming interface, and uh, that Flash chip uh, contains several uh, pieces of software. It contains uh, code for BIOS, code for management engine, uh, some data for gigabyte Ethernet, and so on. And within management engine region, there is a kind of partition table that describes what's inside the uh, ME region, and uh, uh, one of partitions calls MFS. I believe it's shortcut for uh, ME file system. Uh, there are uh, tools of, available on the internet that uh, helps you to split uh, ME image uh, to different partitions and extract MFS partition. And MFS partition actually is, appears to be a set of pages, and I will talk about this in details a little bit later. And now several words about uh, flash memory. Flash memory is, uh, operates uh, at user level, uh, usually like, like uh, all types of uh, information storage devices, like hard disks. But in hard disk, you're able to uh, read and write only using sector uh, amount of information. But for flash memory, you could access arbitrary cell of, of memory uh, separately, so you don't need to write the whole page of data. But uh, physical, uh, physical methods that behind uh, the flash memory allows you to modify any bit that already one to zero state. But if you want to return it back from zero to one, you need to perform erase. And erase operation is uh, performed only on the whole page or block. And uh, there is uh, one limitation on the flash memory, a very important one, uh, that uh, deals with number of erase cycles that's supported by the flash chip. Usually, uh, that number is between 10,000 and 1 million, and after some amount of erases of some specific page, uh, this page is unable to be erased anymore. So you are unable to set all bits of that page to one state. And uh, it means that it's damaged, it's bad, and you're unable to use it. So uh, when someone tried to design file systems that uh, would store it data inside the flash memory, he need to think about that limitation. So uh, there are two uh, primary goals when designing file system. First one is minimizing the erase count. So uh, if you have small piece of information that should be written uh, in, in the flash, you don't need to write the whole page. You need to write as little piece as possible and add additional pieces of data to, to existing page. And another goal is weird leveling. So uh, you need to count how many times you erase some specific page and uh, try to erase every page uh, within your area uh, even with even number of erases. So uh, not, not came to a situation where one page erased it thousands of times and another one not erased it at all. And uh, there are a lot of uh, different types of flash file system already designed. In Linux, you could find that there are six of them listed on this slide, and for sure there are more of them exist. Uh, but uh, Intel uh, designed their own file system, and uh, I will describe it. If you're interested in uh, ME in general, I strongly recommend to read this perfect book uh, because it's help understand uh, what it's really for and uh, describes uh, in not, not, not in detail, but uh, in very very useful way how uh, ME uh, holds security, and we will speak about security today. 
Also, great presentation is Intel ME Secrets by Igor Skaczynski. Uh, it's pretty old. It's not about the latest version of ME. Latest one is ME11. Uh, it was developed uh, for uh, Skylake architecture, and now there are Skylake and Kaby Lake processor work on uh, ME11. And uh, this one for older version of uh, ME, but uh, it still contains a lot of interesting facts, and I recommend it strongly. And here is uh, an ME11 project on the GitHub. It's our code that helps you to split ME uh, image, uh, ME region to partition extract modules, and after that you are able to, uh, for example, disassemble them uh, because uh, uh, previous version of uh, management engine uses uh, some not, not so common uh, CPU type, uh, ARC, and uh, from uh, ME11 they use x86 architecture, so it's very easy to disassemble it because there are a lot of perfect tools available for that. So let's uh, start looking at internals of the management uh, engine file system. Uh, when you find the uh, MFS partition, uh, you could easily discover that uh, it could be split on separate pages. Every page is uh, 8 kilobytes in, site and it's in size, and uh, every 12th page uh, is uh, system page. System page doesn't contain data, but contains information that is necessary to uh, recover that data, to, to build it uh, at the file level. Uh, there is always one empty page, page that not used neither by system data nor by file data. And all other pages are data pages, and usually they are the most uh, valuable, uh, and they, they occupy the most number of, of pages. And here is like see like definition of how to calculate uh, number of data and system pages. Every system and data page uh, starts from uh, page header. Uh, page header starts with fix, fixed uh, signature with fixed value, and uh, the only page that doesn't, doesn't have that value is empty page. Uh, then uh, there is a very important field, USN, update sequence number. Uh, this is a sequential number. When you erase some page and uh, write new header for it, you just increment the largest uh, USN by one. So uh, every page uh, on the storage have its own uh, USN value. And using this value, uh, you could uh, find in which order uh, pages was erased. Uh, next field uh, stores the number of erases, and uh, I believe it's used for weird leveling because without it, it's impossible to uh, discover how many times a page was erased. Uh, next field, uh, uh, I call it next erase field, uh, it contains index of the page that uh, would be erased next. I believe it's kind of strategic planning for weird leveling for file system. Uh, this names just just my guesses. It's not documented by Intel, so I uh, add names by my own decision. And uh, final data field is first chunk. Uh, this field is uh, zeroed for system page and contains some uh, value for data pages. And uh, using this field, you could make distinguish between system and data pages. Uh, then there is one byte checksum of all previous data, and the last byte is always zero. So uh, when you split your file system on pages, uh, using this field you could find empty page, and using first chunk field you could separate system and data pages. Uh, the most uh, atomic uh, piece of data in uh, ME file system is chunk. A chunk is uh, 64 bytes of payload of user data and uh, two bytes of checksum. Checksum is calculated from uh, data and uh, index of chunk. All chunks, system and data, have uh, continuous uh, numbering. numbering. Uh, starting from zero, there are system chunks, and later, then data chunks. 
And uh, on this uh, picture, you could see that uh, the same data for different chunk IDs produce different uh, checksum. And uh, checksum is 16 bits, and uh, it's easy to make a reversion of uh, CRC algorithm. Uh, so if you have uh, payload and checksum, you could easily reconstruct the index number. You could calculate it from other sources, but it's way to, to check that you calculate it properly. When we speak about system pages, they have uh, ability of incremental update. Uh, system page consists of header, then array of in indexes, uh, which is obfuscated. I don't know why. It's the only thing I've seen obfuscated inside uh, ME. Probably there is some mathematical reason for that. Probably it's just uh, attempt to make analysis of the file system more difficult, but it's easy to bypass using uh, CRC, CRC reversion. And uh, then there is an array of chunks. There are 120 chunks, and the number of uh, elements in the index array is uh, one more than number of chunks. When uh, you see just erased empty system page, all elements of the array are filled with FFFF values. So it means that they are not used. Uh, Elements that would be erased next, would be used text, have higher bits drop it to zero. And when you write some meaningful information, index of the chunk uh, to some element, uh, you need to drop second bit too, so this value never uh, will be, uh, will, will have two upper bits set in, in uh, one state. Uh, so, I don't know why they use two bits. Probably it's way of uh, support uh, transaction. So uh, you need to write in two different pieces of uh, system page. You need to modify index value and you need to save data in, in chunks array. Uh, so you could, couldn't uh, did it in one write operation. And if, uh, for example, system, fa system power failure will happen uh, between the writers, uh, writers, system will be in unstable uh, conditions. And uh, probably second bit is used just to make that transaction started, transaction ended. I don't know exactly. Uh, data pages are a little bit simpler. They have <coughs> a set of chunks. There are 122 of them. And they have an uh, array of, bart, of bytes uh, that uh, contains marks. Either uh, chunk is uh, occupied by data or not. Initially, all elements of that array are filled with FF value. And when some chunk is uh, stored, uh, it's dropped to zero. And uh, as I said, in header, there is a number of the first uh, chunk uh, in this index of the first chunk that stored within this page. So uh, when you knew the index of data chunk, you just find proper page, just find uh, offset within that page, look at the free elements array and see if it's uh, stored or not, and extracted data, it's very easy operation. Uh, so on this slide, you could see the logical process of reconstruction of data area of the MFS. Uh, number of data, data chunks uh, over the file system, just plain multiplication of number of da data pages and the number of chunks on one uh, data page. And to reconstruct uh, all set of chunks, you need just enumerate every data pages and enumerate all chunks within that page. Every chunk, uh, every data chunk store it uh, on the file system only once. So it's very easy to find it. Uh, for system pages, uh, reconstruction process is a little bit complicated. Uh, number, logical number of uh, system chunks is much less than uh, capacity of system pages. So system pages could store more system chunks than it's necessary. Because system chunks could be stored in arbitrary order and you could just incrementally update any chunk. So you need to enumerate system pages in update sequence number order. 
then you need to decode index of every uh, chunk on the page and store its data in output array. And uh, it is possible that uh, some chunks will be overwritten twice or 10 times. It's normal because uh, uh, when uh, driver for MFS updates data, it tries to make as little erases as possible and uh, it just rewrite, overwrite some pieces of system area to avoid additional, uh, additional erases. And uh, when you rebuild the whole system area, uh, you could find that uh, inside it uh, there is two fields. First one is the volume of the, uh, the, the volume header, uh, MFS volume. Volume consists of uh, signatures that have always constant value. Uh, also, there is 30-bit value that uh, always hold one. I believe it's kind of version of the, of the file system, and I never see anything else than one. Uh, then there is a total amount of bytes in uh, system area and data area together. And the uh, last field, uh, 16 bits, is number of files that uh, could be stored within this file system. This number is used in the second field. Second field is, uh, looks like a file allocation table from old uh, file system from Microsoft. Uh, there is no number of entries here uh, is number of data chunks and number of files. So uh, first, uh, end files elements uh, contains information about finding the beginning of the file, and all others uh, contains information about how to find continuation of the file. And uh, its indexing is very, very looks uh, looks very like like the old DOS file system. FAT. Uh, this diagram represents uh, the sequence of action you need to reconstruct the content of the file. At the lowest level of MFS, there is no file names. There is only numbers. Number of uh, files that could be stored hold in uh, volume header. And uh, as input to the data retrieval function, you have file index. You look uh, into the FAT and uh, extract index of the first block. Uh, if it uh, have some predefined value, 0 or minus 2 in 16-bit uh, signed uh, version, uh, this means that file doesn't exist. I believe uh, 0 is for a file that not stored or erased, and minus 2 is uh, vice versa. But I don't know. Both of them uh, works in the same way. If this value is stored in index, uh, no such file exists. Another special value, minus 1, is uh, used to, to display that uh, this file is empty. So there is no data chunks is occupied by that file. And uh, in other case, you extract uh, data chunk that referred by that index. And uh, you need to extract next index from the same uh, array, from FAT, file allocation table. And if this value less than 44, le less or equal than 44, 64, then this is last chunk in a sequence, and you need to output specified number, number of bytes to the output stream, and uh, file processing is finished. Otherwise, you need to output the whole chunk and repeat the, the, the process. So uh, it's, if, if you knew how FAT uh, table uh, works, it's very, very similar with one difference. Uh, MFS uh, doesn't store the length of the file in the direct way. So the only way to find the length, uh, you need to uh, enumerate all chunks in a sequence uh, using uh, this uh, way. And when you find last chunk, uh, you will know the length of the file. So it's very easy to extract anything, any, any file with some specified number from the MFS using this information. 
Uh, and uh, in my previous presentation uh, that was uh, mentioned in the, at the beginning, uh, I described uh, that uh, we find a lot of information by extracting resources from uh, FIT exe. Uh, FIT, uh, it's short uh, for uh, flash imaging tool. That's tool provided by Intel to vendors to uh, companies that produce motherboards and, and notebooks, and uh, actually it's not a public uh, binary, so you are unable to download it from Intel site. Uh, but uh, often that that file is included in BIOS update that delivered, for example, from Acer website to Acer customers. So uh, you could easily find this uh, binary, extract resources, and there will be three files, three binary files, uh, among the other resources. They are prototypes for different, uh, for file system of different capacity. So there is the main uh, number, number of file slots from 2056 up to 1024, and uh, on different platforms uh, with different uh, management engine models required a different number of uh, files to be stored. Uh, Intel uses different uh, file system sizes. So it's just kind of statistics. And uh, now when we know how to extract data from the file system, how to extract numbered files. We need to see how ME uses uh, file system, how it uh, transfer, transform it to a common file system with names, with uh, directories, and so on. Uh, some num file numbers uh, have uh, predefined meaning at, and use it in uh, many different places. For example, files number two and three use it uh, for creating anti-reply tables. Anti-reply is one of security mechanisms that's supported by ME. It prevents you from just uh, reverting to previous file state uh, by uh, direct write to MFS. They have two uh, counters and uh, two, two places to store a counter. One uh, within file metadata and another one in anti-replay table. And counters should match. If they didn't match, uh, file system considered to be damaged. Also, there is uh, file number four that use it to migrate data from previous to uh, next uh, SVN, secure version number. I will speak about that a little bit later. Uh, five, file number five uh, manage, uh, use it for storing file system quota. There are two types of quota. Quota for uh, amount of data and qu quota for number of erases. Uh, so uh, this quota could be used to limit some specific model of a med med management engine by uh, performing uh, uh, excessive number of uh, writes that leads to excessive number to erases. So they help to preserve uh, denial of service on, on flash by limiting uh, number of operation by some module. File number six is very interesting one. Uh, it's uh, later mapped to name Intel CPG. Uh, which uh, holds the default state of the file system. When you initially get uh, motherboard, for example, it has not deployed management engine. It cont contains only this file or probably the next one. And uh, at the first start, it uh, reads the data from that file and uh, expl explode it and create the, the whole file system. And uh, file number seven contains the same data, but the difference between them is that uh, this one could be created by uh, vendor, by companies that produce motherboard. But this one is created by Intel. It has uh, hash uh, stored inside uh, one of records uh, within 
uh, header of the code partition directory uh, in the ME region, and any manipulation of this file will uh, lead to uh, an ability to boot. So management engine will, will not work properly. But this file could be manipulated in any way. It's, uh, again, uh, flash image tool could be used for, for, for that. And uh, I will uh, discuss about internals of that file right now. And file number eight contains home directory. So starting from file eight, there is uh, file names appears. So inside file eight, there are information that necessary to extract uh, files like in Linux or Windows. Here is a short description of internals of Intel CVG or FITS CVG. File starts with uh, 32 bits value that holds number of records, and then records with the fixed structure. Uh, it's, I believe it's self-described. I don't need to read it. Uh, user ID, group ID, Unix likes, writes, and uh, the most interesting uh, features are bits in uh, mode field I, E, A. Uh, Letter I means that uh, that file uh, have integrity protection enabled. So uh, it uh, will be protected with uh, HMAC, and uh, you will be unable to modify it without destroying that HMAC, HMAC value. E means that file should be encrypted, and uh, it will be encrypted uh, with IS-100, I believe, 2056 in counter mode. And letter A means that uh, file uh, is uh, subject to anti-reply protection. Also, there is additional option uh, field. Uh, we see that there are four bits used in uh, this field for ME11. Uh, the lowest bit uh, means that that file could be overridden by FITS CVG. So if in Intel CVG this bit have zero, uh, data from FITS CVG would not be used at all for this file. Uh, number, bit number one uh, means that MCA process uh, could modify the state of that file, and there is uh, some uh, communication mechanism between host, between central processor and ME exists that allows to manage that files, uh, files with such uh, type of uh, access. And two other bits still unknown, we have no idea what they for, but uh, for some files they are enabled, and for other files they are not. And uh, finally, every file uh, descriptor have uh, length of the file and uh, offset of the data within uh, the CVG file that allows you to extract, extract content of that file. And here is uh, just dump uh, of a piece of, MFA of uh, CVG file, and you could see that there is names, there is uh, double dot names, that means that you return back to previous directory, and uh, here is expansion of the passes. And for example, you could see on file CT that uh, will, would reside in home bub CT directory, uh, in home bub directory file name CT, it has no additional attributes like integrity check. So you are able to modify it in, in any desirable way, and uh, if you will attend that uh, speech of my colleagues, there would be a lot of speech about this file. And uh, when system is deployed, uh, file number eight uh, appeared uh, on the file system. It contains a uh, directory which actually is a set of file records. File records uh, always 24 bytes. It's described by this uh, sl this uh, structure. Again, there is a file nor uh, within MFS. Uh, file nor have uh, structures that built from different pieces. For file systems that store it on the flash, uh, highest. Four bits uh, contains file system ID, and for MFS, it's always one. 
So it means that it should be processed by uh, handler that support flash file system. And we'll, I will uh, note another type of file system a little bit later. Uh, lowest, ten, uh, lowest 12 bits uh, describes uh, files, file no number that could be used to extract content of file from MFS by number, as was described earlier. And uh, other bits use it for salt. Uh, for different types of file system, uh, this four bits uh, use it uh, always in this way, and all other could be used in any different way. For example, on, on, file, on some file systems, uh, that bits con contains, uh, contains information about where data is stored and how long is it for some constant records. But for home file system, uh, it's uh, always used in this way. There is another salt value, 16 bits, and uh, when you explode uh, the file system, it will, will be converted to a dump like this one. Uh, this means that it's directory, file protected with integrity, file protected with encryption, user ID, group ID, salt value, here is another salt value, and uh, there are additional bits uh, appears here. Integrity, encryption, anti-reply are copied from Intel CVG during deployment or created by some process that writes new files to file system. This bit uh, very interesting uh, because there are two types of uh, encryption, two sets of encryption keys used in Intel uh, MFS. Uh, they called Intel and non-Intel keys. I don't know why they have such separation, but uh, some files protected with non-Intel keys and some other files with Intel keys. So using this bit, you could find uh, which type of keys use it. Here is always non-Intel key. And uh, if a file have bit I integrity enabled, then a raw file that could be extracted from file system uh, ends with uh, 52 bytes uh, trailer, which contains uh, additional security information for that file. Layout of that information shown on this picture, uh, it's always have HMAC value that uh, check file integrity. Uh, it has bit field that uh, contains properties about anti-reply encryption and so on. Uh, these two bits, uh, this bit contains index in anti-reply table. Uh, we have two files, file number two and file number three. Probably, again, it allows uh, make atomic operation when you need uh, multiple writes to file system to uh, change your data. And <coughs> There is a union uh, that have nuns for uh, IS uh, counter mode, uh, that unique for every file, and have random and counter values that are stored in file metadata and in anti-replay table. And these two values should match. Otherwise, file considered to be altered in, in proper way. And, uh, Files uh, that have uh, I-bit sets uh, have always such type of security block at the end, and files number two, three, and eight have that security block too because uh, they don't have direct reference from the file system. Uh, they are the files two and three outside the file system, and file eight is uh, beginning of the file system. Uh, so they are always protected with integrity, but not protected neither by anti-replay nor by uh, encryption. And uh, to calculate HMAC, you need two new secret keys that use it to uh, control HMAC value. And uh, you need to hash file data you need to hash the whole uh, security structure with HMAC zeroed, and also there is file no and salt that was extracted from, file, from uh, directory are involved in uh, calcula calculation of HMAC. So you just couldn't swap two files because they have different 
file numbers and you couldn't manipulate them easily. You need, you need to know HMAC key, which is secret. Uh, so, uh, using information I provide earlier, you are able to extract data. You could find uh, is it encrypted or not. Oops. Sorry. And now let's uh, turn to security part of the research. Actually, there are up to 10 security keys could be used to provide security for files stored in MFS. Two of them called RPMC keys, uh, replay protection, protection monotonic counter. Actually, it's feature of the SPI flash chip. Uh, we never see such uh, chips with such option enabled. Uh, but uh, this one uh, kind of hardware counter that you can, couldn't uh, manipulate. Uh, if uh, there is uh, no H, uh, RPMC counter available, uh, management engine simulated by software, um, software version of counter. And uh, as I said earlier, there are two sets of key, Intel and non-Intel keys. And the uh, set contains two keys. Integrity key and confidentiality key. Confidentiality key is used, used for calculated HMAC and integrity, oh, sorry, integrity used for calculate HMAC and confidentiality used for IS encryption. And also there are two versions of the key, previous and current keys. Uh, when uh, you when Intel decided that uh, there is some problem with the uh, current version of management engine and you need to upgrade it, they could increase secure version number. And after that, uh, there are no standard way to roll back to previous version of SVN. So uh, for the long time, the current version of SVN was one. After latest patches that Intel published several weeks ago, uh, the current version is three. If you install ver uh, firmware version three, you will be unable to return back to firmware version one. And the uh, calculation of that keys, of all of that keys except RPMC, involves SVN number. So uh, if you new keys for old file system, it's not suitable for new one. And uh, that keys are calculated at the very early stage of ME running. And uh, there is special check that current SVN version is above than one. And there is a special partition named PSVN contains a previous SVN number. And in this case, uh, two additional keys would be calculated. Uh, an additional set of keys could be, would be calculated. And when file system discovers that uh, there is attempt to access files that protected with integrity or confidentiality and current keys doesn't work, it tries previous keys if they are available. And this allows migration after you change firmware version to new SVN. Also, it should be said that uh, hardware of management engine have some additional uh, hardware devices that helps uh, to provide security. They have special engines for IS, RSA, and hashing and HMAC. Also, they have secure key storage that allows you to store key inside it and use it in conjunction with hashing HMAC and uh, IS encryption, but you will be unable to extract data from that storage. And, uh, Access to these hardware security features are very limited, uh, so only ROM, initial code that runs uh, on the ME, module named BAP, bring up, and module Crypta have access to that devices. No, none of other models able to perform crypto operation or, for example, use keys stored in SKS. Also, Intel designed very secured process of uh, derivation of that keys. At the very beginning in the ROM, uh, 
some data loaded from device called gen generator. I don't know how it's created. Uh, I will talk little about it uh, on the next slide. But uh, it's the most valuable secret data for the whole ME. It's kind of root of trust, the data stored in gen. Then that data loaded uh, to SKS as uh, HMAC key. Then next key is derived and stored in memory for a short time. After that, it wrap it with IS encryption and store it in memory. And plain text key is removed from memory. So at that point, there is no plain text version of the key uh, available even inside ME, only, only a rapid version. To use this key, you need to unwrap it, but you're unable to unwrap it in memory. You are able to unwrap it only in secure key storage. And then you could use it from secure key storage in uh, conjunction with uh, encryption or HMAC calculation. So if you are on this point, you are unable to extract this key. This key exists in memory for a very short time. But if you have direct access to encryption device, to secure key storage and IS HMAC, you could repeat the calculation of these keys and derive this key by your own. And this table describes uh, different aspects of key usage that we discover from management engine. Plain text key, neither confidentiality nor integrity, never stored on the flash in any form. So you are unable to read them from the flash. Actually, they store in memory for a long time uh, between uh, process switches and so on, they always wrap it on the key number 21. So if you find the way to read the memory, you will get nothing. You will get only encrypted key, but you don't know uh, the decryption key, and you are unable to decrypt it in memory using uh, access to SKS. All keys are depends on SVN value. So if you are able to exploit uh, some specific version of management engine, for example, with SVN1, that would be nothing uh, that can, couldn't help you by exp for exploiting a newer version of SVN. All secrets depends uh, on data obtained from gen device. Gen device is uh, handled very careful. When ROM finishes its processing and uh, pass control to RBE module, which is starting module for ME, it empties gen and erase copy of data that holds for uh, deriving uh, purposes. So after you, after ME, perform any ROM, any necessary ROM operation, there would be no gen data available. The only uh, exclusion we find is so-called DLMP partition, which uh, could, pre could be present in uh, ME file, uh, ME region, and uh, ROM load uh, code uh, from uh, DLMP partition if it exists, and execute it, and uh, if uh, there is some uh, code that access key, it's able to read gen data. And uh, we find new version of ME that use this operation uh, probably for uh, purposes related with uh, digital content protection. And the most un unexpected thing that uh, there are two pieces of gen secret for Intel keys and non-Intel keys. And if you manage to run manage engine, management engine under JTAG from the starting vector, you will be unable to read anything uh, from related for Intel keys because uh, this piece, this part of gen is disabled. There would be random value, not actual one. But data related with non-Intel key are still there. So uh, if Intel not change everything, you will be able to derive 
keys that necessary for non-Intel secured files. And it will be suitable for any version of SVN. And uh, most uh, files on the file system are protected with non-Intel keys. Only this little amount of modules are used for are uses Intel keys. Module PTT, which is TPM, software TPM, DAL IVM, which is uh, Java virtual machine, and MCA, which uh, uses for deployment. And uh, last words about uh, different types of file system. We find the seven types. Uh, root file system is constant file system uh, defined in module VFS, which contains very little amount of files, but additional files are mounted uh, to the root file system. Home file system, uh, I described it for, the, for this whole presentation. Uh, bin, it's another type uh, of uh, file system that creates when different binary modules are extracted uh, and loaded to the operating system, they are available uh, to the ME operating system. They are available in the bin directory. They just mount it at that directory. SASRAM is uh, independent, uh, non-volatile storage that holds very little amount of information on non-volatile suspend RAM. And it's described in BringUp and VFS modules. FPF, it's uh, field, pro field programmable fuses. It's one-time programmable pieces of memory, and they're supported by separate model and not available in server platform services. And uh, Dev folder is like in Linux, uh, holds all special files that could be used by different process. And my presentation from Troopers uh, holds uh, description where to find the names of that files. And there is some funny uh, Yuma FS, Yuma is Unified Memory Architecture. And uh, there is name, but no references to that file system. Probably it's just experiment from Intel. So, uh, final words about my presentation. If you have physical access to uh, SPI chip, uh, you're able to read the file system and modify it at the lowest level, at, uh, at ref raw file level. But you need to know the keys uh, for a file system if you want to manipulate with the protected files. And it's not too easy. Uh, but, uh, Despite Intel uh, designed very complicated and I believe smart security model, they uh, left ability to get secrets uh, from uh, gen for non-Intel keys. And uh, if you have exploit in BAP module, you're able to recalculate the keys for the current version of SVN and you will be able to manipulate with any file on the file system. For example, if you extract uh, confidentiality key, you will be able to just decrypt the password that you use it for AMT, for remote access. It's just stored and encrypted by AS, and we, we, we did that. So uh, they have good uh, security features, but not, not, not perfect. That's all that I want to say. For today, thank you. If you have a questions, we have five minutes. Thank you.